So this is the Garmin R10 launch monitor. Now it's by far one of the most popular launch monitors out right now. It gives all kinds of information on distance, club head speed, ball speed, carry, and a whole lot more. It can even be used as an indoor golf simulator. Now I recently just got a new set of Hama irons, and to be honest, I have no idea what my distances are on these clubs. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use your Garmin R10 to see how far your clubs actually go. So let's get to it. Before we do the test, there's four steps we need to do to help ensure that the Garmin R10 is the most accurate that we can make it. Now, the first thing you have to do is make sure that the Garmin R10 is up to date. One is the Garmin Golf app. The app will update software updates automatically behind the scenes when the Garmin R10 is connected to your mobile device. Now, the second way you can do this is using the Garmin Express program through your computer. Now, all you have to do is download it from the Garmin website and then connect your Garmin R10 to the software and it'll automatically update the software inside the Garmin R10 each time you connect to it. So once the Garmin R10 has been updated, the next thing you're gonna to want to do is to make sure that the unit is calibrated. Now a lot of people don't calibrate the unit before each and time they use it, and it's really easy to do. So all you're gonna do is to go into the Garmin Golf app, go to device calibration, and then calibrate the Garmin R10. This usually takes anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute, and once calibrated, you know the Garmin R10 is internally ready to go. Once you have the Garmin R10 updated and the unit has been calibrated, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the Garmin R10 is set up in the right location. For indoor use, you're gonna to need to have the ball at least eight feet away from the net or screen. Now, 10 to 12 feet is usually recommended, which that means that the unit would be another six to eight feet from behind the ball. Garmin recommends that it's usually around seven feet to get the best information. So now that we know more about the Garmin R10, let's do a little practice session. I'm gonna hit all of my clubs, my nine, my eight, my seven, my six, and my five iron to see what my average numbers are. And to do so, we'll be using the Garmin R10 and we'll be comparing it to what I know is a very trustworthy source, this professional indoor golf simulator. So let's do this. On this first shot with the five iron, the Garmin R10 showed a carry of 177 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 179 yards. In my book, that's pretty darn close, within five yards of each other. So we'll go ahead and mark both of those down as our initial carries. On the second shot with the five iron, the Garmin R10 showed a carry of 169 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 177 yards. So a difference of about eight yards, a little bit more than I like, but we'll go ahead and use it. Um, and we'll go on to the third shot. So this third and final shot with a five iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 176 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 171 yards, within tolerance of about five yards. So in terms of average yardages, my five iron is showing about 174 yards with the Garmin R10 and with the simulator is showing about 176 yards. So right now that helps me out a lot because I know my five iron is probably about right around the 175 yard mark. But let's go ahead and move on to the six iron. On my first shot of the six iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 158 yards while the sim showed a carry of 162 yards. So again, within five yards of each other, it's about four yards in this example and go ahead and mark that one down. On the second shot with the six iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 157 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 163 yards. So again, within five yards of each other, and I'm really trying to dial in these yardages. On this third and final shot, the six iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 152, while the Sim showed a carry of 158. So it's a little bit more intolerance, about six yards in this example. But if we went ahead and averaged the Garmin R10 numbers, it's showing my average carry is about 156. And the sim is showing carry about 161. So here, you know, you kind of have to think maybe I'm probably hitting somewhere between, you know, 158 or in there. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the seven iron. With this first shot, the Garmin R10 was sharing a carry of 158 and the sim was showing a carry 158. So right there, you know, they're exactly the same number, definitely within tolerance. And uh, we'll go ahead and move on to the second shot. On the second shot with the seven iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 162 while the sim is showing a carry 161. So again, within one yard of each other, that just blows my mind how close these numbers are. On this third shot, the seven iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 150, while the sim showed a carry of 152. So then if we go ahead and averaged out the seven iron at the Garmin R10, my average carry is about 157. And that's exactly what the simulator is showing too. So, so that just blows my mind that that right on with each other, but we'll go ahead and move on to the eight iron now. On this first shot, the eight iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 145, while the Sim showed a carry of 142. So a difference of about three yards, um, definitely within tolerance, and we'll move on to the second shot with the eight iron. 
On the second shot, the 8 iron and the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 145 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 150. So again, within five yards, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the third and final shot with the eight iron. On this third and final shot with the eight iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 143, while the Sim showed a carry of 147. So a difference of about four yards. And if we go ahead and just average these out, the Garmin R10 is showing an average carry of 144 yards, while the Sim was showing a carry of an average of 146. So in my mind, I'm hitting an eight iron about 145 yards, somewhere in there. But let's go ahead and move on to the nine iron now. On this first shot, the nine iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 130 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 134 yards. So the difference is about four yards. Um, but we'll go ahead and move on to the second shot with the nine iron. And with the second shot, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 137 yards, while the Sim showed a carry of 143 yards. So it's a little bit more than five. Here it is six yards difference, but it's close enough. And we'll go ahead and move on to the third and final shot with the nine iron. And with this third shot on the nine iron, the Garmin R10 was showing a carry of 123 and the Sim was showing a carry of 123. So again, the numbers are exactly the same. It's amazing as little unit can do. So on average, the nine iron was showing us a carry of about 130 on the Garmin R10, while the simulator was showing a carry of 133 as our average. So, you know, for me, I would say my average carry on the nine iron right now is about 131, 132 yards. All right, so here's the fun part. Um, the way I went ahead and did this, I, I made a spreadsheet and I got the averages out. And for me, you know, with the Garmin R10, the a five iron was showing an average of about 174 is my carry. And the Sim was showing a carry of about 176. So it's a difference of about two yards, how these two units are showing. But for me, you know, I'm about 175 yards with my five iron. And this is a really great way of just dialing your numbers when you don't know, because you can even see here that, you know, they're off by two yards on average. And that just shows you that how powerful the Garmin R10 is, that you don't need a really expensive unit to do this. And you can really figure out what your yardages are before you go out to the course. Now, in terms of the six iron, you know, my average was 156 on the Garmin R10 and the simulator is 161. So within that five yard tolerance, kind of where I like to play. So I would probably say, you know, I'm about 157, 158, somewhere in there is with my six iron. But this really gets really interesting. The seven iron, which I didn't know this until I did this today, my average on the R10 was 157 and the simulator was an average of 157. So right there, they're point on with each other. However, my six iron is showing about 157. So for me, it kind of opened my eyes like, whoa, I'm hitting my six iron and my seven iron the same distance, which I know is not a good thing, but that's what I need to work on is, you know, getting more power out of my six iron than I'm getting because with the five iron I'm at 175 and with the seven iron I'm at 157. So I should really be hitting about 162, 163. So I'm not getting as much yardage as my six iron. And that shows me I need to spend more time with that club. And then we move on to the eight iron. The average on the R10 was 144 yards while the sim was an average of 146. So again, within two yards of each other. So in my mind now I know, okay, an eight iron, I'm 145, um, right about in there and I can kind of see where my gap is now. Um, I go from 145 to 155, so there's about a 10 yard gap between my seven iron and my eight iron. And um, it's really good for me to know these things because this is gonna what's gonna help me this season actually lose 10 strokes on my game. And then lastly, with the nine iron, the R10 was showing a 130 as the average and the sim was showing 133. Again, th within three yards of each other. So in my mind, I know now that my nine iron goes about 131, 132. So really, you know, the Garmin R10 is a real steal at 599. I mean, you, this is one little thing you can just do at your house. You can do it at the range. You can find out what your yardages are. Again, the Garmin R10 is a fantastic unit and I just love it. So big thanks to our friends Indoor Golf Design for letting us use this amazing indoor golf simulator. To be honest, I'm just blown away by the accuracy of the Garmin R10. I mean, for $599, it's within five yards of this $50,000 professional indoor golf simulator. I would highly recommend to any of you guys out there looking for an affordable launch monitor that can be used in a simulator this golf season. Now I got mine from our good friends at Flavor.com. They have the best selection around and they're huge supporters of our community. So there's links down below where you can check out the Garmin R10. But if you want to see what we thought of the new Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, what I feel is probably the biggest competitor to the Garmin R10 this season, then check out this video right here where we show you all about it. And I'll see you in the next video.